Okay, students, again, a very good morning to all of you. For our kid, for Baiduri, for Citrine. Thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate your presence. Okay, so today we are going to continue with the final content standard in our syllabus 6.6, .6, Spherical Mirror. But before that, let us do some recap on what we have discussed yesterday. So are you ready and good to go? If you are ready, you can say yes. Yes. Are you ready and good to go? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, so uh, this is the recap on yesterday's content standard 6.5, optical instrument. Okay, you can see there is a table here, a table of comparisons for compound microscope and astronomical telescope. So these are the important properties uh, you have to master very well uh, in order to uh, compare what is the difference between compound microscope and astronomical telescope. Okay, students, first and foremost, we are going to talk on the power of lenses. Okay, so both are using two types of lenses, right? Um, both are using uh, two convex lenses, namely as objective lens and eyepiece. Okay, what can you say about the power of compound microscope? Okay, if you remember... For compound microscope, both objective lens and eyepiece have a high power. Okay, remember both have a high power, but the objective lens has a higher power compared to the eyepiece. Okay, which means the objective lens has a shorter or longer focal length compared to the eyepiece. Anyone? Shorter. Shorter, okay. Remember, a lens with a higher power has a shorter focal length. It is inversely proportional. Okay, how about astronomical telescope? What can you say about the power of its objective lens and eyepiece? Anyone? Okay, if you remember yesterday for astronomical telescope, the objective lens has a low power. A low power mean longer focal length, long focal length. Meanwhile, the eyepiece has a high power. The high power mean the focal length is short. Okay, so this is the first comparison on the power of lenses for compound microscope and telescope. Okay, second is the characteristic. Okay, first one is the characteristic of image formed by the objective lens. Okay, the first image. The first image is the image formed by objective lens. Do you remember the characteristic of image formed by objective lens in compound microscope? Is it? Name the three characteristics. Yeah, yeah, you must know how to draw as well. Okay. Okay, so the characteristic, talking about characteristic for compound microscope, the first image is real inverted and magnified okay for compound microscope real inverted and magnified you can refer back to your module or you can check from your textbook as well okay meanwhile for astronomical telescope who remember yeah rim okay how about telescope first image first image is the first two is the same it is real inverted the only difference is it is diminished okay so real inverted and diminished okay next the characteristic of the final image okay the final image is formed by the eyepiece okay what is the characteristic of the final image formed by compound microscope and telescope okay anyone okay you can type your answer also in the in call messages Please don't be shy. Okay, so we test uh, what you learned yesterday. Either you get content or not. Okay, so if you remember, for the final image, the characteristic for both are the same. Okay, which are for compound microscope, it is virtual, inverted compared to the first object. Okay, and also magnified. Okay. Uh, for astronomical, it's the same virtual, inverted compared to the object. Object here refers to the actual object, okay, to the real object. And magnified, okay. So the final characteristics are the same for compound microscope and astronomical telescope. 
Okay, now the fourth okay, properties. Distance between the two lenses. How far must we place the objective lens and the eyepiece from one and another? Berapa jauh kita nak letak mereka? Okay, the distance is labeled with L. Okay, do you remember? For compound microscope, we must place these two lenses at a distance greater. Okay, greater than the sum of their focal length. Okay. While for telescope, they must place exactly at a distance which is equal, okay? Equal to the sum of the focal length of the two lenses, okay? So this one greater for microscope, for telescope, it is equal, okay? And the last but not least is the magnification, okay? How to determine magnification of compound microscope students? Okay, magnification. Magnification is how many times okay, the image has been magnified or has been diminished okay, uh, by using those optical instruments. So for compound microscope, the magnification is equal to the magnification of the objective lens multiplied okay, with the magnifications of the eyepiece. Okay. This one, how to find MO and ME, you remember. MO is height of, height of what? Height of image divide height of object. Okay, this one also the same. Okay, for ME is height of image divide height of object. So, uh, for total magnification for compound microscope is magnifications of the objective lens multiply with the magnification of the eyepiece. Okay, well, how about telescope? What is the magnification for telescope students? For telescope, it is FO divide FE. Okay, the focal length of the objective lens divide with the focal length of the eyepiece. Okay, so you can add this uh, if, uh, additional information later on in your module. Okay, don't worry, I will share to you the full answer after we end this lesson. Okay, anything else you want to ask on 6.5 optical instrument before we move to 6.6 .6 spherical mirrors? Anyone? Any question? Okay, and as, as asked by Sinway, yes, you must know how to draw the ray diagram for magnifying lens or magnifying glass, compound microscope and telescope as well. Okay. Okay, morning, Siu Ching. Okay, we are just uh, finished doing the recap. Now it's about to enter the final content standard. Okay, 6.6 .6 students. Image formation by spherical mirrors. Okay, so we have done with lenses. Now is to deal with mirror. Okay, so in this content standard, the first learning standard 6.6.1. Okay, each and every one of you must know how to determine the position and features. Features is characteristic, okay? The position and the characteristic of image formed by concave mirror and convex mirror. Okay, so talking about mirror, we have two types of mirror, okay? We have plane mirror and also curved mirror. So curved mirror, we have two, concave and convex mirror, okay? So here we are going to focus on curved mirror only, which is convex and concave. Okay, so to understand them, okay, let us take a look at the first thing, a curve, or what is the phenomenon occur in a mirror? Okay, how does the image in the mirror form? Students, can you answer this question? Formation of image in a mirror form due to what phenomenon? What is the phenomenon involved in Mirror. Reflection. Yeah, reflection. Very good. Okay, it is due to reflection of light. Okay, reflection. For lenses is refraction. Okay, so for mirror is reflection. The image form due to reflection of light. So you can see this is the image of the baby appear in the mirror and the image of poo which is dancing due to reflection of light. Light. Okay. 
Okay, next. Okay, this one. Now, what can you observe in this slide? Okay. You can see that the man is standing in front of two mirror and he is standing at the same distance. Okay, this one. He is standing at the same distance, but what can you observe inside? Both mirror are formed different characteristic of image, right? You see the image here is like this, but the image in the second mirror appear to be bigger, okay? And it looks closer compared to the first image. So anything you can say about this? Why there is a difference between the characteristic of image form in both mirror students? Because of concave and convex mirror. Yes, very good, Sinwe. So you can see here, because these two curve mirror are different. Okay, both are different type of curve mirror. Okay, so later on we will discover how is the formation of image in both mirror. Okay, so students, to understand spherical mirror, to understand curve and concave mirror, so first and foremost you must know what is a spherical mirror. Okay. So spherical mirror is a part, okay, it's a part of a hollow sphere that has been cut, okay. So this is the hollow sphere, hollow means inside is hollow, empty, okay, it got spaces. So when you cut this sphere into two parts, okay, it can form a spherical mirror, okay, with two surfaces. One surface will be concave, another surface will be convex, okay. Uh, so it is like this. So what is concave mirror, students? Concave mirror is a mirror where the inner surface of the part that has been cut, which reflects light. Okay. So if you if you can, you can go to your kitchen for a while and you can take a spoon. Uh, you can take a silver, uh, not silver, a uh, stainless steel spoon. Uh, boleh tak pergi ambil sudu di dapur kamu tu kalau ada sudu. Okay. Uh, but I don't want the plastic one. Okay, use the uh, steel spoon. Okay, if you look at the part of your spoon, the front part it to act as a concave mirror. Okay, you try to place the spoon in front of your face. See how is the image form? Okay, on that spoon. Okay, this one you can see also on page two hundred and seventy in your textbook. Okay, can you open your textbook page two hundred and seventy? There is a photograph six point eight there. It shows the image formed uh, by a girl which is standing in front of a surface of a spoon. Okay, so again, what is concave mirror? It is the inner surface of the part that has been cut which reflect light. So this is the concave part, the front part of the spoon. Okay, it is uh, assembled concave mirror. All right, and meanwhile, for convex mirror. Okay, convex mirror is the outer surface, okay? The back part of the spoon, okay? The outer surface of the part that has been cut which reflect light, okay? So this one, the back part of the spoon act as convex mirror, okay? This one. So you can twist your spoon and see your image uh, from uh, forming from the back part of the spoon, it will be different, okay? The characteristic of the image formed by the front part is different with the image formed by the uh, back part of your spoon, okay? Do you have a spoon in your hand now? Siapa yang pergi ambil sudu tadi di dapur? Ada tak? Anyone? Okay, later you can try, okay? So this is why you can apply at home to understand concave and convex mirror. Okay, next students. Okay, this is the field of vision uh, in front of a plane mirror, concave mirror and convex mirror. Yes, we seen. Anything? Oh, you go to the kitchen Yes, just now. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Okay, so you can see the difference between your image form of the front part and the back part of the spoon. Okay, very good. Okay, now students, this is three types of mirror here. We have three mirror shows. The first one on the left side, this is, who knows what mirror is this? What type of mirror is this? The first one. Plain mirror. Yeah, this is plain mirror. Okay, so you can name, this is plain mirror. 
is a plain mirror. This is the field of vision. It has a narrow field of vision. Okay, it cover a narrow area. Okay, while the second mirror is concave. Ah, the second mirror is concave mirror. Very good. Okay, this is the front part which reflect light. So it has a concave shape. Okay, this one. Okay, then. It has a very narrow field of vision. Lagi kecil daripada plane mirror. Okay. While the third one is? Convex. This one is? Yes, convex mirror. So this one you name. It is concave mirror. And this is convex mirror. Okay. So convex mirror has a very wide field of vision. Okay, you can see. If you are asked to draw the field of vision, let's say they give you these two light only. Let's say they give you these two. So how to draw the reflected light? Very simple. You just need to draw the normal. Okay, you draw the normal line here, a line 90 degree to the surface of the mirror. So this is the angle theta. This is also the angle theta, angle of incidence. You can use your protractor and measure the same angle here. Make sure it is also theta. Then you can draw this line. Okay. This is what you can find in your textbook, formative practice 6.6. Okay. Question number one. They ask you to draw the diagram for mirror. Same goes for concave. Okay. This is the incident light. Heading towards the mirror. So to draw the reflector, right? Very simple. You just draw a line 90 degree to the surface of mirror. You measure the angle here. Let's say the angle here is 15. So using protractor, you measure another angle 15 here. Then you can draw this line. Okay. Same goes to convex mirror. Okay. Let's say they give you these two line. They ask you to draw the reflector. A ray from the mirror. So you just draw the normal. Make sure it is exactly 90 degree to the surface. Let's say this angle is 20. Okay. So you measure an angle of 20 here and to the other side. So you can draw the reflected light from the mirror. Okay. Very simple, right? So from here we understand convex mirror has a wider field of vision compared to another two plane and concave mirror. Okay. Okay, next students. Okay, this is the optical terms which is used in spherical mirror ray diagram. Okay, similar to lenses, there is a few optical terms which you have to know and understand very well. Okay, first, okay, this is the phenomenon of reflection occur in concave mirror and convex mirror. Okay, you can see for concave mirror, the parallel ray is converged okay, at the focal point after reflection. Okay, you can see that they are converged to this point. Semua pergi sini after reflection. Okay, the light focus or converge at the focal point. In one, what happened in the convex mirror? In the convex mirror, you can see that this is the light that heading to the mirror which is parallel. So they are diverged. Okay, see it reflect upwards. For concave, it reflect inwards, focusing to a point. This one it reflect outwards as it coming from the focal point at the back behind the mirror. Okay. So this is the basic you must understand for concave. Okay, the light reflect inwards, converge to a Focal point. Again, for convex mirror, it is reflect outwards, diverge okay, from the focal point behind the mirror. Okay. And then next, okay, this table shows to you the optical terms we are using. Okay, first, the principal axis. Okay, this is the straight line okay, at the center, passing through the center of curvature. Okay. Second, we have center of Curvature. Okay, what is center of curvature? This is the center of sphere, okay, which produce concave or convex mirror, okay? If it lenses, we call the center of curvature, it is like the optical center, okay? And then third, we have radius of curvature, 
Okay, radius of curvature, the symbol is R. What is radius of curvature? It is the distance, okay? Distance between the pole of the spherical mirror and the center of curvature. Okay, later you look at the diagram and see where is all this center of curvature, radius of curvature lies at, okay? Then next, we have focal point. A focal point is labeled with capital F. For concave mirror, the focal point is where the light ray, which are parallel to the principal axis, converge at this point. Okay. Meanwhile, for convex mirror, the focal point is behind where the light rays parallel to the mirror appear to be diverged from this point A. Okay. For example, as you can see in the simulation just now, for concave mirror, okay, this is the light coming in a parallel direction. So it is converged to a point. Okay, so this is the focal point of the concave mirror. Meanwhile, for convex mirror, okay, this is the parallel light coming through the mirror. So what happened? The light diverged out. Okay, it reflects outwards. So this is the focal point. It is behind the mirror. Okay, so can you follow me so far? Are you doing good there? the optical terms and then we have the object distance okay object distance is how far okay we place the object uh in front of the mirror okay it is the distance between the object and the pole of the spherical mirror okay pole of the spherical mirror yang inilah this is okay the pole of the spherical mirror okay let's say we place an object here so this is the object distance. Okay, let's say we place an object here in front of a convex mirror. So this is U, object distance. Distance between the object and the pole of the mirror. All right? Okay. Okay, next we have image distance. Okay, image distance similar to lenses. It is the distance between the image and the pole of the spherical mirror. And last but not least is the focal length. Okay, focal length defined as distance between the focal point and the pole of the spherical mirror. Okay, students, so uh, if you look at my drawing just now, okay, this is the focal point and this is the pole. So this is F, okay, focal length. Again, for convex mirror, this is the prince, uh, This is the focal point, and this is the pole of the mirror. So this distance is called as focal length. All right. Okay. So these are to do with the optical terms. Okay. Now we go to the most important part. Okay. How to draw or how to construct a ray diagram for concave and convex mirror in order to determine the characteristic of features of image formed by both mirror. Okay, similar to lens, it also has three rules which you can apply. Okay, it has three rules, uh, but this rule is on reflection. Okay, for lenses, uh, the three rules are due to refraction. Okay, so the first rule. Okay, we took a look at concave mirror first. Okay, so rule number one, Okay, what you can see here, this is the light ray which is coming parallel to the principal axis. Okay, it is heading to a concave mirror and what happened, you can see it is converged at the focal point. It is reflect inwards or converged to the focal point. Good okay, morning, Junwei. So this is the notes, okay? So a parallel... A ray parallel to the principal axis reflected through F. Okay, it will reflect or dive, uh, converge to a point, to the focal point. Okay, second rule. Okay, second rule, a light ray passing through the focal line, uh, the focal point, as you can see here. Okay, this is the light ray passing through the focal point. 
So what happened? It will be reflect parallel to the principal axis. So rule number one and rule number two is opposite. Okay, this one coming parallel, reflect to F. Okay, this one passing through F and then reflect in parallel direction. Okay, and the third rule, a light ray coming or pass through the center of curvature C. Okay, in passing through C, so it will reflect in the same path. Okay, it passed through C, the light passed through C, heading to the mirror. So from the mirror, it reflect back in the same path. Okay, so it travel in the same path. Okay, a ray passing through C reflect back along the same path. So these are the three rules in drawing the ray diagram for concave mirror. Okay, first and two is opposite. And then number three, very simple, passing through C, reflect back along the same path. Okay. And then this one for convex mirror. Okay, so this is convex mirror. The light is coming from this side. Okay, so the first one, the light is coming parallel to the principal axis. So what happened? It will diverge, reflect outwards. Okay, reflect outwards from the focal point behind. Okay. Uh, line ini dia tak berapa lurus but when you draw make sure it is a straight line. Okay. Second rule, a ray directed towards F. Okay. This is the light ray directed towards the focal point. Okay. So what happened? When it touched the front part of the mirror so it will be reflect. Okay. Parallel. Okay. It will be reflect. Parallel. So this one also the same. One and two is opposite. Okay. And number three, similar to concave mirror. Okay. A ray directed towards the center of curvature. So this is the center of curvature. So it will be reflect back along the same path. Okay. So I hope you understand these three rules. Okay. Later on, you can check back. Okay, you can go back to this page and try to digest them. Okay, rule number one, rule number two, rule number three for both convex and concave mirror. Okay. Okay, so now let's practice students. Okay, before we practice, you can see this uh, animation again, how the image form uh, for both convex and Concave mirror. Okay, can you tell me the name of the mirror here on the left side? What type of mirror here? Concave or convex? Students? Concave. Okay, this is concave. The light is coming from this part, so it has a concave shape. Okay, very good. And for the mirror on the right, it is? Convex. Okay, it is convex. Okay, this is the front part. The front part is where the light coming from. Okay. So it has a convex shape. So this is convex mirror. Okay. Okay, then next. Okay, I want you to practice this. Okay, so we have learned the three rules. Okay, for those who have the module with you already, siapa yang belum ambil tu tolonglah pergi ambil dengan segera dekat sekolah. Okay. Uh, you can also go to your workbook on page 100. And 91 and 192, 191 and 192 to draw the ray diagram. Okay, we are going to start with concave mirror. Okay, for concave mirror, the first diagram we place the object. The object is at infinity, a very far away object. Okay, uh, we don't know the exact distance, so we put it U as infinity. Okay, so in order to determine the characteristic of image, so how to draw. Okay, this is our concave mirror. Okay, here is the principal axis. F is the focal point and C is the center of curvature. Okay, if you look from this drawing, the focal point is half of the center of curvature. All right, so how to draw? So here we can apply rule number, rule number, ini rule number berapa students? Number one. Ini rule number. Are you sure number one or number two? Uh, number two. Ah, ini rule number two. Rule number one is parallel. Okay, then go to F. So rule number one, uh, rule number two, go to F and then reflect parallel. Okay, so this one is rule number two. 
we draw a ray of light from a very far away object so it heading to the focal point so where will it goes reflect where parallel yeah it will be reflect parallel to the principal axis so this is the reflected ray okay and then second we can apply the third rule okay a ray coming from very distant object heading to the center of curvature and what happened where it will be reflect to it will be reflect along the same path okay reflect back to c okay you can see it will reflect back and when you draw make sure these two line are parallel okay make sure you these two line are parallel. so where is the intersecting point student can you see the intersecting point there so this is the point of intersection okay between these two lines where our image form at okay you can see the blue arrow is our image all right so what can you say about the characteristic of image form here any idea inverted inverted yes clearly and then another two maybe okay, you can try maybe magnified maybe magnified and then virtual or real um, yeah, this is this is our mirror okay our object is in front of the mirror image also form in front of the mirror so it is virtual okay uh, for mirror ini you gonna tengok uh, they are different with lenses okay for mirror it different with lenses for mirror students okay if you look from this drawing if the image is formed in front, it is real. Dia terbalik dengan lenses. Okay? Aha. Then, it is inverted. Number three, it is actually diminished. Okay? Diminished means the object, uh, the very far away object is bigger. Okay? So, it is diminished. Okay? Again, for real and virtual, it is opposite to lenses. Ah, yang itu you kena ingat, jangan terbalik. Alright, the inverted, same. If it is formed below, object is above, we call it inverted. Ah, diminish, you can compare. Diminish, magnify or same size. Okay, only this one is different with lenses. Okay, okay, yes. <laughs> and next, second position. Okay, so the second position, uh, again, we have a concave mirror. So now we place the object uh, U is greater than 2F. Okay. U is greater than 2F. Okay. So this is where we place our object at. O is our object. O in E stand for object. Okay. So this is the center of the picture and this is the focal point of the mirror. Okay. C in E center of the picture. Okay. Okay, then center of curvature ini means what students, if you draw the complete mirror, kalau you lukis termin yang penuh ini, macam ni, center of curvature ini is the center, it's at the center point of the, the whole mirror. Okay? Uh -huh. So I erase first this one. Okay? Okay, then how to draw? Okay, which rule we can apply here? We have an object here. Okay, so which rule we can apply? We can apply rule number. Actually, here you can apply all three rules. So, but we apply two rules only all the time. So, here you can apply rule number one. Okay, uh, center of curvature of the mirror. Yes. Okay, so a light parallel to the principal axis to the mirror. So, it will be, remember, this is our concave mirror, right? So, it will be converged. It will be reflect to F. Okay, so this is rule number one. Okay, second, you can either draw it to F or you can draw it to C. Anyone will do. Okay, so here I draw it to F, to the focal point. So what happened, it will be reflect parallel to the principal axis. So this is the point of intersection between the two lines. So where our image 
platform at. Okay, so this is our image. AI in need for image. Okay, can you tell me the characteristic of image now? Okay, first one, real or virtual? Real. Real, okay. Same side. So it is real. Very good. Upright or inverted? Uh, inverted. Okay, object is above, image is below, right? So it is, yes, inverted. Okay, how about the size? Diminish. Yeah, you can compare the size. The object appear to be bigger, right? The object look to be smaller, so we say it is diminished. So the characteristic of image is real, inverted, and diminished. Okay, very simple, right? Okay, and this is the, in the addition, this is the distance of the image. Okay, the image is between F and 2F. Okay, C ini sama dengan 2F. Okay, next. Okay, this is the third position. Okay, we now place the object at 2F or at C. Uh, you ini place at C, at the center of the vector. Okay, so which rule we can apply here? We can apply rule number one, rule number one, and rule number two. Okay, rule number three cannot apply because the object is now exactly on C. So rule number three is not applicable. Okay, so to apply rule number one again, a straight line parallel to the principal axis, reflect to F. Okay, rule one. Rule number two, go to F. And then reflect parallel. Okay, so for this one, you will see the image will be formed exactly below. If you draw correctly, the image is formed exactly below the object. All right. So again, real or virtual, everyone? Real. Form at the same side, so it is real. Okay. Then form below the principal axis, it is. Inverted. Inverted, yes. And how about the size? Same size. Same size. You can see same size as object. Okay, simple, right? And it is form at 2F or form at C. Okay, image distance equal to 2F or equal to C. Okay, this is the next position. Okay, now we place U in between. U in the object distance. U is in between F and 2F. Remember C in me sama dengan 2F. Okay, equal to 2F. So you can place the object either here, either here, anywhere between F and 2F. Okay, tak semestinya exactly at the center between these two. Okay, as long as it is uh, in between F and 2F, you can place it anywhere. Okay. I erase first. Okay, then how to draw? Okay, which rule we can apply here? Okay. Okay, we can apply rule number one. Actually, here we can apply all three rules. Okay, so we just select two, rule number one. Okay, and this is rule number, rule number two. Okay, so did you see where is the intersecting point at? Okay, these two points intersect here. Okay, this two line, okay, meet here. So there is the intersecting point. So this is where our image form at, okay? So I, I is refers to image. So what is the characteristic of image here? Real, okay, inverted, magnified. Okay, you can see the object is, uh, the image is bigger compared to the object. So it is magnified. And the distance is greater than to F. Okay, the image form beyond 2F. Okay, so far how do you think? Easy, right? How to draw the ray diagram for curve mirror. And this is the next position. Okay, now we place you exactly at F. Okay, so we can apply rule number. Here we can apply rule number. Anyone? One. Rule number one and? Two. Two can apply or not? One and three. Yes, one and three. Rule number two cannot apply because it is not exactly at F. Nak lukis macam mana? You nak lukis dia tegak. It cannot apply rule number two here. So we apply one and three. Okay, number one. 
reflect to F. And number three. Okay, number three to the center of curvature. And then reflect back at the same path. Here you will see that these two lines is going to be parallel. Okay, there is no intersecting point either at the left or either at the right side. So where is our image form at? Infinity. Yes, very good. For this one, the image is formed at infinity somewhere at this side. Okay, somewhere above here. So we say the image is ritual, opposite side. Okay, behind the mirror. So it is ritual. Second, it is upright. Okay, it formed above here. The object above principal axis, image also above principal axis. So we say it is upright. And the size is somehow magnified. Okay? Okay. Then, image distance is infinity. Okay? Sure. Yeah. How, how are I going to know i going to apply the rules? Like, I'm, how are I going to determine? I'm going to use the rules number one, two, three. You can see the position of the object. Where? Where is the position? There is position. You can apply all three rules. And there's a position where only two rules are applicable. Uh, for example, here. Here, rule number two is not applicable because it is exactly at F. And before, when you place the object at C, okay, when you place the object at C, okay, rule number three is not applicable. Okay, so we apply rule number one and two. If the object is here, okay, you can apply uh, which one? Uh, tengok mana, all three. One, two, three. Object is here. Okay. And apply all three. Ini boleh apply tak rule number two and not. So can apply rule number one and rule number three. So it is depend on uh, where is the position of the object to determine which rule is uh, applicable to be used. Okay. Am I answering your question? So teacher, can yeah. I say that if the object is u equal to f or u is smaller than f so i apply the rules one and three yeah okay okay thank you okay welcome okay so we continue students okay this is another position i think this is the final position for concave mirror okay where u is placed uh less than f okay it is placed very close to the mirror so we apply rule number one here okay and then we can apply rule number, rule number three. Here, yeah, rule number three. Okay, then this is the intersecting point. Okay, it will form behind the mirror. The image form behind the mirror. So it is number one, ritual or real? Ritual. Okay, so it is ritual and then it is upright. Okay, form above principal axis, object also above. And the size you can compare. So it is magnified. Okay, the image is magnified. Okay, this is object distance, addi uh, image distance, additional uh, features. Uh, the importance is the first three. Ritual, uh, upright, and magnified. Okay, yes. Uh, can you go back the slide? Okay, this one. Okay. I want to ask if I am the object, I stand in front of the mirror. Okay. I can see myself or not. Okay, you you can see yourself. You um, That's why I asked you to take the spoon just now. Okay, so you stand in front of the mirror. You stand in, uh, in front of the spoon. Can you see your image there? Yes. And then you try to adjust. Okay, you try to adjust the spoon. You bring it closer. You bring it for the okay, which position you can see your image and which position you cannot see your image. Okay, you can practice uh, this at home. All right? So virtual means I cannot see myself. Uh, virtual means what? Cannot see your, cannot see yourself. Yes. Yeah, because okay. it is from uh, behind real, we can capture the image on the screen or on the mirror. Okay, it's a very good question. Done. Okay, then students. Okay, this is the conclusion. Okay, from characteristic of image formed by concave mirror with a different object distance. Okay, and nanti ini boleh study lah. 
Alright? Okay, next. Okay, let us test your understanding on concave mirror. Okay, everyone? Uh, I hope you're still there. Okay, try to do this question. Okay, number one, you can type your answer in the in-call messages. Okay, the first question, the diagram shows an object placed in front of a concave mirror. Okay, so this is our concave mirror. This is the object. F is the focal length. Okay, the distance of the object is less than the focal length. Okay, you see now U is less than F. Okay. So what are the characteristics of the image form? Okay, this is the last one tadi yang kita tengok. Okay, so we test your short term memory. Okay, is it real, upright or bigger? Real, inverted, smaller, virtual, upright, bigger, virtual, inverted or smaller. Okay, which one? Sin Wei says C. The rest of you, what do you say? Okay, so if you go back to the table just now, U less than F. Where is U less than F? This one. Okay, so U less than F, virtual, upright, and magnified. Okay, so it is C. Okay, virtual, upright, magnified. Okay, then number three. Okay, the answer is already there. Never mind. Okay, which diagram show the correct reflection of light from a concave mirror? Okay, where F is the principal focus. So which one? A. A in the wrong. This one for convex mirror. Okay. C also wrong sebab it show uh, it diverged. Okay, salah juga. Ini wrong. Why wrong? B, why wrong? B wrong because it converged to, to F. Okay, it converge to C or converge to 2F. Supposed to be converge at F. Okay, so the answer is C. Alright, okay. Next, okay, this is SPM 2010, question 7.1, uh, question 7, okay, on concave mirror. Okay, students, so this is our concave mirror. We place the object here. Again, object distance is less than F. All right. Okay, then uh, what is the meaning of focal point? So do you remember what is focal point for curved mirror? Anyone? What is the focal point for concave mirror? Okay, how to write this? Okay, it is a point where all the parallel light meet and converge at after reflection. Okay, very simple. So a point where all parallel light will converge at after reflection. The keyword is parallel light converge okay, after reflection. Three keywords. Parallel light converge. Okay. And then question B, they ask you to draw ray diagram in diagram 7.1 to show how the image form. Okay, so I erase the in first. How to draw the ray diagram? Eraser. Okay, so how to draw the ray diagram? Okay, which rule we can apply here? Our object is less than F. So we can apply rule number? One and three. One and three. Yes, very good. Okay, so if you remember, this is how we draw the ray diagram. Okay, first, we draw a line parallel to the principal axis. This is rule number one. So it is reflect at F. Okay, and then rule number three, from the object, okay, to the P center of curvature and then reflect back along the same path. So this is the point of intersecting between these two lines, the image form at the opposite side of the mirror. Okay, so new label, image. All right. Okay, then question C. And okay, now they give you 7.2. It shows cross-section of a concave reflector use in a torchlight. So if you have a torchlight at home, you can open your torchlight and see the reflector, the curve reflector inside. Okay, this is the curve reflector. 
this is where the bulb is placed at. Okay. And ray S from the filament bulb is incident at point Q. So this is the light coming from the bulb. It hit the surface of the reflector. So you are asked to complete the ray diagram on here. So after S, where will it go through? So student, how to draw? First and foremost, what must you draw? Remember? I tell you just now. Remember the field of vision, if they ask you to draw, first and foremost, you can draw the, you can draw what? You can draw the normal line. Okay, this is the normal line to the reflector. So you will measure the angle here. Okay, let's say the angle here is 15. So take your protector, measure another angle of 15 here. Let's say this is 15. Then this is your reflected ray. Okay, so remember you can draw the normal first. Okay, then only you measure the angle of incidence and draw the angle of reflection. Then also you can draw the reflector. So like this, okay, as shown here, the normal line, angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection. So this is the reflected ring. Okay, are you clear with the drawing? Yes or no? The job, the job. Yeah. The angle is 90 degree. Yeah. Uh, normal is 90 degree. 90 degree to the surface. Okay. Okay, now we have curved surface. So you can estimate okay, 90 degree. Agak-agak saja lah. Or if you have a protractor, you can measure the actual 90 degree. Okay, the normal must be 90 degree. And then you place your protractor here. Measure the angle here. Okay. And then... Uh, it must be equal to the angle at the other side. I must be equal to R. We learned this in reflection before, right? And okay, then only you draw the reflected ray. Normal must be always 90 degree to the surface. Okay, boleh? Sinwe, can? Senang saja, measure 90 degree. Okay, let's say this is your mirror. Mirror kamu sekarang macam ini kan? Curve. Okay, or like this. This is plane mirror. Plane mirror very simple. 90 degree. Macam ini. Okay. Ah, this one also sama lah. You play 90 degree. The normal. Okay. This one also 90 degree. Okay. If your mirror is slanting. Kalau dia letak mirror kamu senget macam ini. Ini normal. Okay. And this is curved mirror. Slanting. Okay. This one. We just measure 90 degree. This is the normal. Uh, this one also 90 degree. Okay, the normal. Uh, this one also 90 degree. Okay, the normal. So are you clear? So this is angle of incident. This is angle of reflection. Here, incident ray, reflected ray. Incident ray, reflected ray. This one, incident ray, reflected ray. Incident reflected. Okay, incident reflected. Okay, are you clear now, Sinwe? Yes. And others, senang saja kan? Okay, so now the light phenomenon, remember for mirror, the light phenomenon is reflection. Okay, reflection of light. Okay, and now question D. Okay, student, the torchlight in diagram 7.2, it does not produce bright parallel Ray. Cahaya dia tak terang. Okay. So you have to suggest a modification that can be made to produce bright parallel ray to this aspect. Okay. First, where to place the bulb? Okay. Second, the curvature of the reflector. Okay. Must be more curved or less curved. Okay. And then suggest one other method to produce brighter rays other than uh, the two suggested here. Okay, so first, where to place the bulb in order to produce brighter parallel rays. Okay, nak letak di mana bulb? Any idea? Okay, I show you again the structure. Okay, this is the initial position. Okay. So, it say it does not produce brighter. Okay. Why brighter? Because the light does not focus on a point. Okay. So, in order to produce 
brighter light so we must make sure to place the bulb exactly at f okay you must place the bulb at the focal point okay so for example okay this is our reflector okay let's say this is your torch light okay so now we adjust the bulb okay okay we bring it to the focal point okay let's say this is now the focal point okay earlier the bulb is placed here okay earlier the bulb is here so we make this area longer so we bring the bulb exactly at f so now what happened okay the light coming from the focal point so where it goes it will be reflect parallel okay the light from the bulb when hit the reflector it will reflect parallel okay hit the reflector parallel so now you are going to have more brighter parallel light okay and then now second the curvature of the reflector okay what do you think uh we have to make the reflector more curved or less curved any idea more curved or less curved more curved or less curved okay which one do you think is better arrangement which one will condense more light more so yes answer is more okay more curvature so more curvature so uh, it will be the light will be condensed for example this is the bulb so it will be uh, it means that uh, the light will be condensed in a smaller uh, smaller area so it will be uh, compact okay if you uh, increase the curvature, if you lower the curvature, so what happened? Okay, it will spread more, so it doesn't condense. Dia tak bertumpu. Okay, so this one, uh, the parallel light is uh, more dense, we say. All right. Okay, then uh, the next suggestion, either then placing the bar at the focal point and increase the curvature of the reflector, we can also increase the voltage or increase the current or by using high power bulb okay or you can change the reflector let's say uh, this one uh, let's say the initial reflector is plastic or any other material so now we can replace it with mirror which is a very good reflector okay or with a shiny material you can use a shiny surface reflector Okay, so any additional increased voltage or increased current uh, by using high voltage battery. Okay, or you can use high power bulb or use the mirror or shiny reflector. Okay, okay, this is another question on concave mirror. Okay, now we have plain mirror here. The boy is standing 1.2 meter and which pair is correct to produce real magnified and inverted image of the boy real magnified inverted okay so which one students okay this one mirror so you can check back from the table from the table earlier real magnified and inverted okay we go back to the previous slide okay real inverted magnified so which one here a okay, real inverted magnified okay one place only will produce this characteristic real inverted magnified for concave mirror we place the object in between f and 2f okay so if you go back to the question answer will be c okay answer will be c concave mirror position of object in between f and 2f okay so that is the characteristic of image formed by concave mirror. Okay, and now uh, characteristic of image formed by convex mirror. Okay, so for convex mirror, wherever you place the object is, it will always produce same characteristic of image. Okay, dia terbalik dengan lenses. If you remember lenses, concave lens, same characteristic convex we have uh, 
varies characteristic depend on the position but for mirror con convex mirror similar characteristic concave mirror different characteristic depend on the object distance okay so this is the difference between mirror and lenses other than uh, the phenomenon refraction for lenses reflection for mirror okay so for convex mirror student as i said just now wherever you place the position of object is it always forms same characteristic of image so for today we are going to draw for two position only the first one is we place u uh, greater than f okay here you can see o is our object and this is our convex mirror okay so this is the light coming from heading to the object. Okay, which rule we can apply here? Number one, number two, number three. Okay, actually here you can apply all three rules. So we select two rules only. Okay, so we apply rule number one. Okay, remember this is convex mirror. So where will it go, student? This light, it will be... For convex mirror, it will be di diverge. Diverge, yes. Diverge from where? Diverge from the focal point. So dia keluar. Okay, diverge from the focal point. Ah, macam ini. Dia diverge. Okay, reflect outwards from the focal point at behind. Okay, second, apply rule number. Ini dia apply rule number three. Okay, from the object to the center of curvature. Remember 2F in the center of curvature. So, it will be reflect in the same path. So, where is the intersecting point? Intersecting point is here. Okay, so our image from there. The blue arrow is our image. You can label with I. So, can you tell me the characteristic of image form here by our convex mirror? Number one. Virtual. Yeah, number one, object is in front, image from behind. So we said it is virtual. How about uh, position, upright or inverted? Upright. Yes, it is upright. How about the size? Diminish. Okay, size is diminished. Okay, why I'm talking to Sinway only? The rest of you, okay, you can respond also, type your answer in the info messages at least. Okay, so virtual, upright, and diminish. Okay, this is additional. Uh, image distance is less than F. Okay, okay, try next position. Okay, now this position, uh, way to place the object. Okay, just now we place the object greater, okay, greater than F. Okay, second, we place the object less than F. Okay, and see what happened. So again, we apply the first rule. Remember, this is convex mirror, so it reflects outwards, diverge from the focal point behind. Okay, so this is incident ray, this is the reflected ray. Okay, then we can apply the third rule. Okay, rule number three. So to the center of the nature or to F and reflect along the same path. So this is the intersecting point our image from that. Okay, you can label with I. Again, characteristic is virtual, upright, and diminish. Okay, and another thing you can see that it is always form, V is always less than F. Okay, so the conclusion we can make for convex mirror, the characteristic of image for convex mirror is always virtual, upright, and diminish. Always mean it is independent on the uh, position of object. So wherever we place the object at, the characteristic of image always virtual, upright, diminish. V, I, D in short. Okay? okay any question on convex mirror? Okay, this is a few example of exercises. Which of the following is the application on convex mirror? Okay, which one do you think application on convex mirror? First, we have makeup mirror. Second, we have reflector in car headlight. 
C, we have dental mirror. And then D, we have blind spot mirror. Blind spot mirror is normally placed on a, on a junction. Okay, on the road. Which one? Okay, which one apply convex mirror? Okay, Sinwe, say D. The rest of you, what do you say? Okay, do you agree with D? Blind spot mirror? Or is it makeup mirror? Dental mirror? Reflector in car headlight? Yeah, the answer is D. All another three applies concave mirror. Okay. And now question two. This is SPM past year question. Diagram shows two cars. Okay, you can see this is car P and this is car Q coming from the opposite direction. Okay, passing through a sharp bend. So this is a sharp bend. And you can see there is a mirror placed there. Mirror X. The first question, which mirror is the most suitable to be placed at X so that the driver in car P can see car Q? Okay, which one? Plane, concave, convex, or two plane mirror at an angle of 60 degrees from one and another? Which one? At the sharp corner, which mirror we place, students? In a sharp corner, yes, very good. So we replay, we place the convex mirror. So the answer is C. Students, if they then give you the name, let's say the question, the answer don't give you the name. They give you the shape only. Okay. Can you differentiate convex and concave mirror? Kalau you tengok garisan ini, garisan ini mana? Ini maknanya the back part of the mirror. Uh, so the front part is here. Uh, so the front part ini show convex shape. Kalau you lukis penuh, dia ada convex shape. Okay, this one also. The line ini is the is the back part. Okay, so if you draw, it has a convex shape. Okay, ada convex shape. Okay, so this is to differentiate convex and concave in case they don't give you the name of the mirror. Okay, next. Okay, this is another SPM fast question. Okay, name. Name the type of mirror used for the cars, rear view and side mirror. Okay, ini you punya cermin pandang belakang and, and then your side mirror. Okay, what type of mirror we are using here? For uh, car rear view, uh, rear view mirror and side mirror. Okay, which one? What type of mirror? Yes, we are using convex, convex mirror. And this is the benefit of using this type of mirror. Remember, convex mirror give you wide field of vision. Okay. And second, it give you upright image. Okay. But the most important is this one. Wide field of vision. Okay. Okay. Question C. In diagram 2, F is the focal point and C is the center of curvature of convex mirror. So this is where we place the object. Object is placed greater than 2F or greater than C. Okay. Then complete the ray diagram to show the position of image. Of, okay. Remember I said to you yesterday in your exam, there will be a question asking you to draw a ray diagram. Okay. It can be diagram for lenses it can be diagram for mirror okay so you must prepare which diagram lenses or mirror so i hope you can draw both well okay so how to draw for convex mirror here okay this is so we draw the apply the first rule the blue arrow is the first rule diverge from f the red arrow is the third rule okay don't forget to draw the arrow as well I forgot to show it here. And this is the intersecting point where our image appear. At. And you must label the image, at least label with I. Okay, or write there, image. So I know you draw your image there. Okay, so two marks for this. Sometimes they give you two marks, sometimes they give you three marks. It depends. Okay, and two characteristics. Okay, you can write the image is either you write virtual, upright diminish okay you can write any two of these three characteristic okay are you clear with that students i need to give tips new into exam okay so you're going to prepare for a diagram either for lenses or mirror will be come out all right 
uh, this one tadi the field of vision nak tunjuk kamu for plain mirror field of vision will be narrow so that's why we use convex mirror in both rear view mirror and side view mirror so it will give you a wider field of vision okay Okay, so this is uh, the second learning standard. Actually, there are two learning standards only here. So the first one, we have learned how to draw ray diagram for convex and concave mirror in order to determine the characteristic of image form. Okay, and the second learning standard is very simple. This is on the application of this mirror in our daily life. Okay, the first one, cosmetic mirror, also known as uh, also known as makeup mirror. Okay, makeup to do the makeup. Okay, so we are using concave mirror, student. Okay, in cosmetic or makeup mirror, we are using concave mirror. So it will reproduce magnified image. Okay, if you use the spoon just now, okay, uh, if you place your face very close to the spoon, uh, the front part of the spoon, you can see your, uh, your face will be bigger, very big, okay, which means it's act like a close up, uh, so you can apply the makeup easily, where to shade the eyeshadow, where to place the blusher and so on, okay, and for dental mirror, okay, siapa ada uh, uncle ke, cousin ke, dentist ke, you boleh pinjam lah, tengok dia punya dental mirror, okay, and try to answer me, or you can google from the net, okay, dental mirror, so we are using concave mirror where uh, the teeth is placed very close to the mirror so it will form upright and magnified image. Okay, so very easy for the dentist to examine and repair the decay teeth. Okay, and number three, we are using concave mirror in reflector in a car headlight. Okay, this is the car headlight. Also in a reflector inside a torch light. Okay, so a parabolic concave mirror, so we call the shape as parabolic, okay, parabolic concave mirror is used to maintain the light intensity even at the far distance, okay. So the parabolic concave, it, uh, it reflects parallel light, okay, from the car headlight, similar to application in torch light, okay. And this one application for convex mirror, number one, it is using in a blind spot mirror or in a sharp corner road, okay? So why? So to have wider field of vision, okay? Normally it's to widen the field of vision. Same with rear view mirror and side view mirror in a car. Second, Security mirror. Okay, where can you can where you can see this kind of mirror? Where you can find security mirror? Okay, if you enter 7-Eleven, Speed Mart, or any other shop, if you notice they place this mirror on top of the ceiling, on the top corner of the ceiling, if they don't have a CCTV. Okay. Normally before they apply CCTV, so they are using convex mirror as the security mirror. So it is to, uh, for civilian or for safety purpose. So uh, you can see whoever inside and see what they are doing if there is any theft or not. Okay. And number three, in the vehicle side or rear view mirror, also use convex mirror. Okay, students. Purpose is the same, wide field of vision. Ini pun sama, wide field of vision for civilian or safety purposes. Okay? So I guess that's all about curve mirror. Okay, very simple. Two learning standard only. The most important part is the ray diagram. Okay? To determine characteristic of image form. And also you have to know a few examples of application for both convex and concave.